jQuery plugin basics. So here we are, we are going to uh, the, uh, learn uh, why uh, usage or building your own jQuery plugins is in fact useful uh, thing to do. And then we are going to in fact build uh, a custom plugin. Uh, it's like a hello world jQuery plugin step by step. Okay. So why you want to build uh, your own jQuery plugins? So plugin is reusable. So once created, it could be used in many applications. Okay, so you know plugin is you can think of it as a component that you can use in many of your uh, JavaScript applications. Uh, plugin jQuery plugin is also customizable, uh, both usage level and the source level. Uh, usage level, uh, if you design your plugin so that uh, users can change uh, the uh, the options, the values options, and then the plugin will actually behave differently, right? So typically, you want to design your plugin so that uh, the optional values, I mean the options, the values options could be in fact changeable uh, by the user. So that is a usage level customization. Uh, plugin can be easily extended and customized. So that is at the source level. So if you're trying to build your own custom plugin, uh, you might in fact take a look at existing plugin and then extend it or customize it. Okay. So a plugin is customizable both at the usage level and source level. Uh, plugin abstracts what you can think of encapsulation functionality. So in a complexity of a logic could be abstracted into a plugin. Okay, so you know by just plugging by calling a plugin method, uh, it does a lot of things underneath, right? Okay, so you can really abstract out the complexity into a very simple APIs in your plugin. Uh, as I said, plugin is very easy to create. Uh, in fact, that is the reason why there are so many jQuery plugins. Okay. Uh, plugin is also chainable, meaning the methods of uh, jQuery plugins are chainable, as we have seen in you know the uh, the uh, core jQuery uh, case, right? Um, so you can actually uh, chain multiple methods of jQuery object, right? Same deal with the jQuery plugin. So usage and uh, building uh, jQuery jQuery plugin is really a useful useful thing to do. Okay, now before we move on, let's talk about the concept of dot .fn, okay? So in jQuery, the fn property is the same thing as a prototype property. So remember prototype pro pro prototype is used in JavaScript object, right? If you want to have uh, if you want to have a constructor function uh, that you want to use as uh, you know the uh, template of creating JavaScript object. Basically, you are adding properties to property property of that Java uh, the constructor uh, function, right? So same deal. So you know fn property is the same thing as a prototype uh, property. So in fact, if you uh, if you actually perform this operation jQuery object fn, it is in fact same thing as jQuery prototype. Okay, so any property or methods added to this fn, okay, will be inherited by all jQuery object. Okay, so you can think of like a jQuery in this case is like a, a constructor function. Okay, any question on that a statement? Any question on this slide? Okay. Moving forward. All right, so now let's try to build a custom jQuery plugin step by step. So here we are going to uh, we are going to actually um, the create jQuery plugin in uh, five different steps. In fact, the first step will actually create the genuine plugin. So you know we are going to in fact create a very simple plugin, which is actually functional. Okay. Uh, and then rest of the uh, uh, rest of the uh, um, cases, we are just adding more functionality. Okay, actually, this two step is something that we are going to actually use to create a very simple hello world plugin. And then these are basically additional features. Okay, all right. So we're going to try this one first. So let's see how simple it is to create jQuery plugin. Okay, so we are going to create our simplest possible 
jQuery plugin in this three lines of statement. Okay, so I am going to use this is the same thing as a jQuery, right? And then dot fn, and then I am adding a property called say greeting, and then basically I assign a function object. So this is it. I created, I created a plugin. Okay, and then oops, sorry about that. And I can use that plugin by again using that method. So here. Uh, I am going to call jQuery in you know, a P. So I want to, yes, it is the same thing as a dollar sign. So I want to find all the P elements. Okay. And then I'm going to call say greeting method. So this is the creation of the plugin. And this is the usage of that plugin. So suppose I have these two P elements. Okay. When this is invoked, it will basically add it will perform prepend, right? So it will just add hello, hello. Okay. This is it. This is simplistic case of creating and using uh, the jQuery plugin. Okay. Now, the second step you want to do is you want to actually solve this uh, dollar sign uh, global variable conflict, right? Okay. So suppose you suppose the user is in fact uh, is uh, adding prototype uh, library JavaScript library. It does have its own dollar sign. So the dollar sign variable from dollar sign global variable from jQuery library is different from dollar sign uh, global variable from prototype. And if you just add this library after jQuery the dollar sign global variable from prototype will override the dollar sign global variable of jQuery. So, you know, when you are running this code, okay, uh, when you're running, yeah, suppose if you have this two, and uh, if I go back to previous slide here, okay, and this dollar sign is in fact from prototype library, not from jQuery library, okay? So this is not, nothing is gonna work. In, at least this is not gonna work, right? Okay, so that's the reason you want to make sure you are actually using this self invoking uh, the JavaScript function in which you are actually passing uh, jQuery object. So this jQuery is unique, right? Uh, in jQuery and prototype doesn't have it, right? So I'm passing jQuery object and this function object will receive it. And then this dollar sign is definitely jQuery object, right? Okay, so in that case, I created a plugin and that this dollar sign should be a uh, dollar sign global variable from jQuery rather than any other JavaScript library. Okay, so you can create a plugin and you can use it and this one should work fine. Okay, so these two steps will actually let you create simplest possible hello world jQuery plugin. Okay, so that is the exercise one. So let me actually explain the exercise one, then we'll go for the uh, the uh, lunch. We'll go for lunch. Uh, so jQuery plugin basics and index here. Okay. So exercise one is we are performing these two steps. Okay. So you know we are gonna actually run this code. So the code is uh, let's see. Open folder and uh, labs and uh, J jQuery plugin basics sample files. Okay, and uh, the one we are seeing is uh, uh, this guy. Uh, let's see, uh, not that one. So the one that we are looking at is plug01. Uh, create simple plugin plug01. Yeah, this one. Okay, so. Uh, so this is the first step. So you know, basically, we create uh, the uh, um, uh, the uh, we just add say greeting function, and then we just invoke it. So let's actually run this guy. Okay, so it worked, right? 
And now if I want to change, so instead of hello, I'm going to just say jpassion. Save the change and then refresh it, then it will uh, deprepend this guy. So the plugin that we have added, it basically all it does is just the uh, prepend uh, jpassion. Okay. Uh, the uh, um, to whatever that selection that you have. Okay. All right, so this is the first step. The second step is, you know, let's actually add this guy. Now we are adding Java, uh, the prototype library, okay? Um, so, you know, basically we are going to add this prototype library to this guy. So here we are adding it, okay? Now I want you to experience the problem. So now if you try to do this, this is not going to work because this dollar sign is in fact coming from prototype library, not from jQuery library. So now let's actually try this. Okay, and nothing worked. And if you actually tried F12, uh, that could be in fact a problem. Okay, say greeting is undefined. Okay, because you know, this dollar sign is from uh, the uh, prototype. Okay, and the you know, this, this is in fact the jQuery things and uh, you know, prototype doesn't understand what this is all about. Okay, all right. So this is basically experiencing experiencing the problem of global uh, variable conflict. Okay, so that's the reason we need to actually create uh, the uh, you know we want to create uh, this uh, self invoking function where we are passing jQuery object and this dollar sign is for sure is in fact the uh, uh, from uh, the uh, the. Uh, um, um, uh, jQuery library. Okay, so now if I do this, so let's actually do this and see what happens. I'm going to just change this guy to like this. Okay. All right, so let's save it. Okay, now this one should work. So now if I refresh it, Now it works, right? Now, if I instead of actually changing, instead, right now it's working because I'm using jQuery. So, but if I use dollar sign like this, do you think it will work or not? What do you think? Do you think it will work? Anybody? Yeah. So Puja said no. Anybody else? Yeah, it should not work because here it is still like referencing prototype version of dollar sign, right? So you have an option. Either you are going to actually have this one inside here, okay? That is typically what you want to do, okay? Or you know, if you're not, if you you, know, you you can just remove this guy. If you're not using prototype uh, library, then it is not going to be a problem, okay? And that's typically what we are going to do in our case. All right, so that is basically uh, lab exercise two. Yeah, so these experiencing and uh, then, uh, yeah, so this is what we are going to do in 1.3, right? Okay? okay, so I'm gonna give you guys about the uh, 10 minutes to this exercise and then we'll have a 30 minutes uh, lunch time. So we will be back uh, 15 after one o'clock, okay? So, what we have done so far is creating a very simple uh, hello world like uh, jQuery plugin. And now we are going to actually add some more uh, additional uh, features to it. Okay, so we did this one. Uh, and the first one is adding iteration or iteration. So if you need to perform element specific operation, for example, each element has its own counter value, for example. Uh, then you need to add iteration. So in this example here, suppose I want to provide a plugin, and uh, if that plugin uh, is used uh, for selection of elements, and that could actually return multiple elements, right? Uh, now, if you want to have each of those uh, elements to be, uh, you know, processed differently. Uh, then you need to add iteration. So in this case, the way you are going to add iteration is uh, this is the way you're going to do. Okay, so this is again, we are going to take a look at creation of the plugin and then use the plugin. Okay, uh, so the way we are, the way we want to use the plugin is 
uh, we say say greeting method but we want to provide a different behavior for each of those elements. In this case, you want to display the counter, uh, one, two, three, and things like that, okay? Uh, if this functionality, meaning if different behavior of each element is not required, then you, know, you might not need to actually add iteration, okay? So in this case, what we want to do is that we are going to, inside the creation of the plugin, so this one is to provide this one, and this one is to provide private scope and now we are going to again uh, add greeting in the function what we want to do is we want to call each for this and so this is representing a particular uh, the uh, DOM element right and then we are going to call each uh, and then, then function okay so uh, basically for each element this is what we are going to perform. So here what we are what we want to do is we want to prepend the counter. So counter will be incremented from zero. And uh, so that's the reason this is actually uh, so and then we are actually uh, incrementing by one first. So that's the reason we are actually displaying one here first. And then hello. Okay. So this is for adding uh, iteration. Okay, so now let's do exercise 2.1. So 2.1 is exactly that. Add iteration. So this is again uh, the same code count. And then basically for each of those items, we want to have a different behavior. Okay. And uh, then when you run the code, so this is uh, the uh, plugin 03, uh, add iteration. Plugin. Plugin all three add iteration. Yeah. Okay, so if you run it, then this is what you are going to see one and two. So if you start with the uh, 10, and uh, then uh, it will start with 11 and 12. Okay. Uh, so for different behavior. Uh, so, for your own exercise, uh, modify the code so that you display the number of characters from each P element. For example, the display should display uh, the display uh, should be something like this: Big Bang. The number of characters is eight, and Super Junior is number of characters is twelve. Okay. All right. So I'll give you uh, about ten minutes to try this exercise. Okay, now besides iteration, we also want to enable chaining so that when, once your method is invoked, so you know, once the say greeting method is invoked, I want to invoke other, uh, the uh, method of the jQuery object. Okay, so you know, in uh, our, the, uh, uh, in our, uh, let's see, in three, uh, this is the additional iteration. So in this case, you know, when I try to call like uh, the uh, uh, CSS uh, method, something like that, uh, it's not going to work. Okay, uh, if you run this guy, and uh, if you call it twelve, yeah. So CSS is not uh, defined. Okay, uh, because the chaining is not supporting your plugin. Okay, uh, so uh, the uh, what you need to do is you have to return uh, this object. Okay, uh, so when you actually return this object, and then that object is in fact uh, the considers a jQuery object, and that should be able to be invoked. Okay, so uh, it, this is actually pretty simple. So that's two uh, exercise two dot two. And uh, basically, all you have to do is just return. So I'm going to actually return this guy. I'm just changing to the existing code. And uh, then if I save the change, uh, at least it should not. Uh, this time, let's actually, you know, the uh, color to red. OK, and save the change and refresh. And uh, then we should actually see, yeah, color red. So let me just change it to yellow, yellow, 
and uh, well you know we can actually yeah and then it will change it to yellow okay all right so that is a change I will I, you want to make okay uh, so for your exercise replace CSS uh, color red to CSS uh, border so instead of changing color uh, you are going to uh, you are going to um, uh, set the border okay so that's your change you want to make okay so I'll give you uh, five minutes Uh, next step is to add options for customiz customizations. As I said before, in order to provide flexibility to your custom plugin, uh, you want to provide the default values for some of those options. And those default values should be uh, changeable when the plugin is being used. Okay, So that is basically adding customizable customizability at the user level uh, to your plugin. So here, when you are calling function, you can specify options. So these options are what user is going to provide. And that option will be extended to existing function. So this is the default values. So this is the default value that you want to uh, provide. Remember that dollar dot extend, okay? So it's merging two objects, right? So this is the default values, like a default value says a greeting is going to be set to good morning and location is set to Boston. And this option is provided by uh, the uh, user of this plugin. And that option will be merged into this default values, meaning uh, whatever value in the option will overwrite the default value. Okay. So once we got the settings, and uh, then uh, we should be able to use uh, the settings uh, in in the actual functionality. So here, instead of the, the, the so here uh, we are getting the greeting property of the settings and location of the settings. Okay. So in the in, when the user it, when the user of that plugin, uh, it could just use say greeting, and uh, you know then it will just use a default values because user does not specify any settings different from that is different from the default so in this case it will just use a default so in this case it will use a default of good morning and uh, location Boston however if user specifies his or her own options okay so in this case greeting is gonna be good evening and location is Seoul okay so in this case these two will override the default settings okay through this dollar sign extend uh, feature okay so in that case it's gonna be good evening and uh, this is from Seoul okay so that is basically adding uh, options for customization okay so that is exercise 2.3 so basically uh, you know when you run when you run this uh, default options default options and uh, when you run this guy and uh, this is what you're going to see. So suppose uh, the um, uh, this guy does not use, it's going to set just the uh, good evening and, and then just remove uh, the location. Okay. So in this case, it's just setting uh, greeting. Okay. All right. So it's just setting the greeting option. So let's actually see. Okay, so it's still using Boston, right? Okay. All right, for your own exercise. Okay, so for your own exercise, I want you to add another uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, property here. And uh, then I want you to, in fact, the display that property as well. Okay, so I'll give you five minutes. Yes, let me just add that thing.
and if you have time uh, please to try to create the uh, plugin uh, that is in the homework okay yeah in fact I'm gonna give you guys to do this homework I'll give you another uh, 10 minutes uh, to try uh, so that you can create this uh, my plugin okay